Hello and welcome to my deep guide and the big books guide. The tablet itself holds a lot of options but they can be actually sometimes hidden, difficult to find, so the aim of this entire guide and the playlist is to help you get the maximum out of your device. When you start up your uh, books device, regardless of which one it is, the library always looks pretty much identical. And uh, the library is going to be the very first one here, unless you've rearranged it, right? So it's where you will find your books and documents. So PDF files, EPUBs, and yeah, text files, or whatever it is that you will be reading, that's what the library is responsible for. Now, there are, by default, I don't like how the library is organized and that can be a deterrent to some people. So there's a couple of like mystifying things about the library, how it works on the books platform. The first one I've already addressed and that was in the previous video or video number four, I believe, uh, where I was talking about using um, one of the synchronization apps. In my case, I was showing the AutoSync app, but you can use whichever works for you. The main point is to set it up so that you can actually synchronize with a cloud uh, uh, account of your choice your own library content because unfortunately the default um, push books platform with the, which is the cloud um, that you get with um, with the books device is basically responsible only for the notebooks it doesn't do backup or synchronization of your library at all. I think that's a gigantic oversight which hopefully will be remedied sometime soon but either way I'm so much used to my workflow with the AutoSync that I don't know if I would switch but either way. So synchronization is one part that's weird and maybe a deterrent to some. The second part which was definitely it took me a long time to kind of find out a proper way to use the library so that it's actually nice and clean is the user interface itself by default and how convoluted and hidden some of the very important functions are on the library. So by default you will have something like this. In my case I have these are the files so these are the PDFs and there's some EPUBs here and there so you have your both PDFs and EPUBs in one place. And they look like this you can see the covers then we have total books we have 45 books in this case, five pages of sliding around to actually go through this stuff. Now, this is messy. For my taste, this is incredibly messy and not a nice way to go through things. So we need a way to organize them, right? So you can actually have your bookshelves as they call them. So you could have like this, you can have a bookshelf here and then you can rearrange it and then it will look a little bit better, which is fine. However, here comes the big thing or the big issue. These folders that you make in the library's default view, which is this one, they're called bookshelves, right? Even though the icon looks exactly the same, it's, like, it's just a bookshelf. That's not an actual folder. So that means that even though I make a directory structure in my library here, it's not actually making directories and it's not moving the files, physical location of files anywhere. Now this might be something that you want. Maybe you want to have all of your PDFs and EPUBs in one directory, physical directory on the device, let's say books or whatever. So that means that if everything is in the uh, let's find my books folder there. So you could have all of your files, let's say just in G drive sync. So instead of having a folder structure, you can have like just your all PDFs stored there and then organize them internally on the device using these bookshelves, which are basically what you get in the default view. And it's important to note this icon here. These, uh, this is an indication that you run, that you are in the bookshelf mode. Okay. So the default view is bookshelf mode. And even though you can make something that resembles directories, what you're making are bookshelves and they are locked to the device rep uh, uh, representation only. It does not move the physical location of the document at all. So you are able to long press and say move and everything will function pretty much exactly the same like into 
a new bookshelf and you can have a create a new bookshelf it looks exactly like a folder and behaves exactly like a folder but it doesn't move the physical location of the documents. This is a very important thing to actually understand because it's a confusing thing. Because you may think like, where is this one? I've moved it here, but it's not there. It's like, well, what's going on? And this is fine. If that's what you're looking for, then you can definitely organize it in such a way. How do you do this? Well, you do this by using these upper icons here. So we, of course, have a search function where you can search for the title of, um, uh, of a document that you might be using so or looking for. And uh, yeah, you can just go like this and it will find what you're looking for good the plus icon if you're in bookshelf mode will create a new bookshelf which i already discussed and it's very easy new bookshelf name type it it appears that's it can you have bookshelf within a bookshelf yes you can so you can actually create uh yeah level one let's call it and can i create yet another one Yes, so you can definitely nest bookshelves like you can normal folders. Long press on a bookshelf or on a file will bring up the contextual menu with the usual functions such as copy, move, delete, rename. In this case, I want to delete this uh, bookshelf that I made. So the contextual menu for the files is as follows. You can have, you can read the book details, that's for EPUBs or documents that do have uh, book details. Then you can change the default app that you want to open this file type with. So as you progress and as you install more apps into the books system, because it's an Android or powered tablet, basically, you are able to change the default program that you will use. Now, I want to, I will keep using New Reader because I really, really love it. But maybe for some reason you want to change it and open your PDF files or EPUB files with Kindle or maybe yeah, one of the other um, programs that you have installed. Now it displays, I believe, only four at a time, but this number here is an indication if you have one out of two, that means that you can just swipe and you see the page with new apps that you can use. And also when you set it up, you have two options. You can open it once with a different program. In this case, you just simply tap on this and you do not touch the checkbox here and it will open it up with a different program, right? However, if you do want to change the default program that's gonna open up a certain um, file type, so in this case, let's say PDFs, if I wanted to change them to open up always with Kindle. First, I would go set as default program and then assign the new default program from that. And from then on, it will always open up with that default reader. So if you prefer Xodo reader or anything like that, this is how you would change your default reader. Then we have also the ability to lock our files. And this is a local type of a lock. So basically what this means is that you can add a um, pin code for the document. Now this is not an encryption of any sort. So even if you lock the file and you copy that file onto any other device or anywhere really, it's no longer locked because this is not an encryption. This is simply a uh, device local password for the device, it's, uh, for the file itself. So if I use, for example, a numeric password, one, 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 and then I confirm it, one, 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 and uh, yeah, I don't wanna use this password setting by default. I'll just go like this. So this is now set successfully. And the main difference that you have with the locked file is that basically confidentiality. So it will not show any thumbnail, so you won't see what it is. You will still see the name, the title of the document. But if you want to open the file, um, I refreshed the library and it arranged the order. So never mind why it moved. It was just, uh, yeah, I guess it synced with some new documents in the background and then it refreshed it. But anyway, this is the one that we locked. So if I tap on it, it will now tell me, please enter your password so that I can open it up. So I go one, 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 one. And then I go OK, and now it opens up. So in the same way, you can unlock it. So I can long press unlock. It will ask for the password normally. One, one, 
one, press OK, and there we go. And now it's unlocked. So it works, definitely works, but it's important to keep in mind this is not an encryption on a file level. This is a device local type of functionality only. Then we have the ability to rename our files, move them to different directories and delete them. Moving is um, basically you enter a move mode. It's fairly self-explanatory. So you can choose where you want to move it and that's it. It's basically just moves it to uh, um, different uh, locations. So let's say into user manuals, it's been moved and that's it. Now, one thing that's important to note is that if you have the uh, nested uh, directories, uh, or in this case, bookshelves, you'll have a small arrow here, which will then you would tap to auto expand, and then choose a bookshelf within a bookshelf. So if you have that nested hierarchy of bookshelves, be sure to tap on that uh, to expand it first, because as soon as you tap on anything, here, it will automatically move it immediately there. So I'm just going to return it back to the main library. And that's that we have one more which is important, which is this button here. And that is the selection mode. So in this mode, when you tap it, you can see that we have little squares in the upper left corner of each file. And our left bar has changed, we are now in selection mode. And now when you tap on the uh, documents themselves, you are selecting them. So the ones that are checkmarked, they are selected. So you can create your selection set. And in this case, let's do yeah, this, 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 and this, for example, these guys. And now I have these operations. So again, I can log multiple files at once, I can cancel which is exit the uh, multi select mode, I can delete the selected files, I can select everything, or I can move them. And in the same thing, it's like move, you will get the same uh, kind of performance. So if I go into user guide, they're moved, and now they are there. So one thing to note, though, is that once you've performed the uh, move or any kind of these operations, you will still remain in the multi select mode. In fact, you remain in the multi select mode all the way until you actually exit manually. So once you are done with what you want to do, I'm just going to return these guys. In this case, I can do select all move out into the main library, go back and click cancel. And now I'm back into my normal library. So those are your main library functionalities and operations and basically what you have by default. This one here is reading statistics. And yeah, it's kind of nice. I'm kind of bummed out that my previous reading statistics have been uh, obliterated, because I did a factory reset of the device when I was doing one of the uh, one of the videos that I was showing. So all of my reading history has been obliterated, but I'm starting to rebuild it again, which is nice. However, if you're interested in the statistics and what you're actually doing, and etc, cetera, etc, cetera, it is there. Then at the very end, we have the options icon. And that one is kind of very important uh, to figure things out so that you know what you are doing. If I click it, I will get some options for my library. And the first one is very useful filtering and sorting. So we can filter by finished books, purchased books, local books, all books, ascend and descend, and we can sort by reading time added name authors and size. While these are good options, I certainly would have preferred an option of file type, you know, so that I can sort by PDF, that I can sort by EPUB or text or anything like that. And just remember that you can also switch between ascend and descend ordering. Okay, then we have the refresh library, which usually I don't have to do it because it's usually really, really good at doing that. And basically, it just rescans the directories that it's monitoring for the library itself. And then it just displays everything. And basically, you just refresh. And it's done. And it will show if there's anything new that's been uploaded. When do you want to use it? Well, if you're manually um, 
transmitting new files, if you've basically transferred new content onto your tablet via USB, autosync or anything else, and you don't see them showing up where they should, then the first thing that you want to try is the refresh library, just to make sure that the library is aware of the new documents in there. Then you can also have the situation like here, for example, we don't have um, book covers, and then you have this function of scan for book covers, and then it's going to scan everything. And as you can see, it is now populating the book covers. And since I have 104 books or documents, of course, it's taking some time. But once it's done, then all of the books will basically show the uh, cover um, as the front page. I'll get to library settings in a bit. First, I want to go to list mode. So you could have the list mode, which is this. But I think this is extremely for my, at least, uh, sensitivities, it's uh, really unclean and something that I find very, very confusing. I usually prefer the list modes on my computer and everything like that, but the idea of actually sorting it into two lines and separating like this, uh, it just creates a very messy situation. So I wish that I was able to further adjust my list mode to kind of adjust how that it, how it shows and that it does not show each file in two lines but actually in one line so that I can get first of all more of the documents or more of the content displayed here and then also for my sensitivity it would be better general overview and have maybe tabs so that you have if we have file type size and then percentage of reading those vertical tabs or columns yeah that would actually make it far more readable there is absolutely no need to reinvent something that already works well however that's what it is um it's there if you prefer it i don't i prefer the cover mode to be honest now you have this general overview and functionalities of the library but we also have this one here library settings and then you can have the uh, basically what this gives you is the ability to let the library know uh, and tell it which directories and now we're talking about directories and not bookshelves right so you're telling the library app which directories on the device do you want it to be aware of right and by default it's going to scan uh, folders in storage main folder books wi-fi transfer push and I don't know what etc means, so maybe notes or note export or something like that. But either way, these are the default directories and I usually use the books directory as I've seen. I organize everything within the books directory and I let Wi-Fi transfer and push do their things, just kind of separate them around. So that's my directory structure. As you will see, if I go into storage mode and let's back out and now I'm in storage. Here are our actual physical directories, books. Wi-Fi transfer and push, right? So you have those are the physical directories that the library is going to be aware of. Now, it's not going to by default look in any of the other ones. So if you put your documentation into, let's say, music, right, <laughs> for whatever reason, you won't see those documents appearing in the library, mainly because when you go to library setting, your library is not aware that it should be looking for documents anywhere else other than in books, Wi-Fi transfer, push. What you can do, you can also say like, look, I don't want you to look just in specific directories. I want you to look the, in the entire storage, um, basically capacity. So look at all folders in storage. And in that case, Wherever you put your PDFs, EPUBs or anything, as long as they are within the storage main subdirectory or directory, they will be found automatically and they will behave like that. Now, this is something that I do not recommend, mainly because there's a bunch of text files, PDF files and things like that that you may not want at all. So, for example, some apps that actually install, uh, they may install with a PDF supporting PDF or privacy policy or text files or anything like that. And all of those will then show up in your library. So that's definitely like an invitation for a hot mess. So what I prefer to do is, as I said, I keep it in the specified folders and I always go into books and then I arrange my folder structure within this books storage books folder. Then I arrange everything in there 
and no problems whatsoever. So I can keep these things a little bit separate. So that's something that how I like to organize the internal folder structure. Now, and then we have one last thing, which I think is the most crucial one and the most hidden functionality of the library. It's nowhere in here, but you constantly would see that whenever I show my library, it shows in a very different view. And it has to do with this icon here, weirdly. So this icon on the left, it will show you uh, your recent documents. So you can see which you're basically most recently accessed documents. So that's very useful. And this one here, you tap it once and you switch to yeah your bookshelves, right? So first indication is you go here and then you hear, okay, I'm switching between my recent documents and my bookshelves, right? So that's, that's it. If I tap again on the recent, nothing happens. If I go into bookshelves, I'm in bookshelf mode and it took me the longest time to get this. If you tap on the bookshelves once it's active, in black, you get this very hidden option, which is extremely useful. Why this is not part of the settings, I have absolutely no idea. But this for me is the most crucial <laughs> part of the library mode and it actually switches the library to work between two different modes. It can work by default in the scan mode, which works with the uh, bookshelves and all the stuff that I talked about, or in a directory mode. And once I switch into the directory mode, would you look at that? Now my library is organized and clean. And this is that main difference that I was talking about that the library in scan mode, it works with those bookshelves, which look like folders, but they are not folders. They are bookshelves and they are library specific organizational tool only. So if you prefer your folders and to find your documents in the folders that you've put them in, then you have to go to this very hidden option and switch between scan mode or the directory mode. Me personally, I prefer this a lot. Here's another caveat of the uh, directory mode. For whatever reason, it doesn't let you um, create new folders when you are in the root. So you can see that we have, if I go into storage, I have books, uh, downloads, and uh, yeah, Wi-Fi transfer, push. Those are the directories that are shown here, okay? And I can switch between the list mode as before or this one. And I can get to reading statistics, which, yeah, whatever. I don't care about that. And I can search, but I can't create anything. However, as soon as I go into the books folder, another folder where there's something, then I can create a new folder and this one will actually work. So let's create a new folder. And now it says new folder name, not new shelf name. Right. And if I do test one, say OK, and I go to storage books, I will have the test one folder. So you need to be aware that that crucial differentiation that what you're actually dealing with in the directory mode are, in fact, the directories themselves, not bookshelves. So once that is done, um, it will display directories, only the ones that are actually used in the settings here. So if I go back to scan mode, into settings, library settings, and you remember this one here where it says books, Wi-Fi transfer, push, etc. And then I said like, I don't know which the etc ones are. I was just being sneaky, sneaky because I didn't want to reveal the big thing, which is the directory mode. However, if I go into the directory mode, now it shows exactly which are the directories that it's looking into. So we have the books, download note, push, shop and Wi-Fi transfer. Now I can't do anything with these, as I said. However, if you were to switch uh, in the scan mode onto the whole storage, you would see all of the directories of the storage in the directory mode as well, which would be messy, right? So you have to kind of find a balance for this. And for me, the balance is using the settings here. For me, the balance thing is to have library settings set in scan specified folders in the storage mode and to run the library in the directory mode. Then I have few folders in the root and I have full organizational way of 
yeah, managing my library documents, directories, and uh, yeah, something that actually resembles the file structure on my cloud, in this case, the Google Drive. One last thing, which again is kind of uh, really, really strange as far as the user interface and user experience goes, is that if you're in directory mode, you don't have library settings. For the library settings to appear, <laughs> you have to go back to scan mode and then you have your library settings. Absolutely ridiculous and confounded and it just doesn't make sense. But once you know where it is, then it's easier to kind of deal with it. However, you really, really do have to be aware of it because it's, uh, yeah, on the intuitiveness scale, this is like a one out of 10, <laughs> not the best. Now you know how it actually works between these two. So that's uh, that's an important, very, very important differentiation to understand that we have two library modes. Scan mode, which doesn't work with the actual directories. It works with bookshelves. They may look like directories and folders, but they are not. If you create a bookshelf, it will not create a new folder on your storage drive. However, if you are in directory mode, then it works as a normal folder structure. So what you create new within the specified folders, you will create new folders, you will reorganize them, and that is the organization that you can kind of come to expect. Now, different people will have different needs, which is perfectly fine. And I think it's a good thing that we have that option. For me personally, this is how I prefer to have it. Some people will definitely prefer to have all of the files in one physical directory and actually organize it as a library and the actual um, bookshelves, which is perfectly fine and normal. So that covers the overall general functionality of the uh, yeah, the library mode. Now, before I wrap up this video, because now you know how it functions and you're able to organize things in a good way, I would just like to talk a little bit about general organization kind of tips and tricks. And you will see that I name my bookshelves here as one, two, three, one dwarf cavern, two my deep guide, three user manuals, four books, right? So there's a reason behind this, and it's to be able to actually find things in an easier way. So let's set up a test directory here so that I can show you what I mean. And this works the same for bookshelves or directories. It doesn't matter. It's exactly the same type of functionality. So I'm going to create my new root, so to speak, just so that we know where we're starting from. And let's say that in new root, I have directory for my books. Uh, then I'm going to have one for documents. Okay. Then I'm going to have one for notebooks. And maybe I want one for uh, web articles. Okay. So this is fine. However, if I sort them by name, um, well, <laughs> they are sorted like this, but maybe, maybe what I'm doing mostly are web articles. And I would like this to be sorted that I always have my web articles directory first, then my documents, then my notebooks and last my books. Well, currently I don't have any way to actually sort this in a custom way like that. And that's where that numbering uh, tip actually comes from. So if I select this guy and then I rename it to actually be, let's say, 01 and then space or anything else, I prefer to use an underscore. That's just because I come from a programming background, but you can just use a space if you wanted to. So if I have 01 underscore web articles, now because I have this uh, set to sort by name, right? It is going to be the first because when it sorts by name, it first sorts numbers, then letters, right? So numbers are always going to have a priority over the letters. And that gives me this ability to rearrange it exactly how I want. So let's say maybe documents, I want always to show second. And then I just go here, zero, two, underscore. There we go, automatically there. Maybe then I want notebooks as zero three. And finally, my books as zero four.
And this way, I have full on control to organize my library, to organize my directory structure exactly the way I want it to. Because once you have really a lot of documents and books, and as you've seen, I already have over a hundred and it's just growing like really, really a lot. Um, for me, it's very important uh, to have these books always in the same visual location. And when you add new documents, things show, shuffle around. If you new, add new directories, you know, things shuffle around. So for me personally, this way of kind of organizing things definitely works. And furthermore, in each of the main category uh, directories, then I would make subcategory folders for whatever makes sense for me. So it could be research, studying, personal, other, or whatever. Now, the other folder I always kind of add, and I would add that as the last one. So let's say that in web articles that I could have like uh, research, and in this case, let's put it immediately, zero one, research, then maybe zero two would be personal, or cooking. I like to have recipes here. Cooking. And all the way until I actually say OK. And then I can either have underscore other. And it will always appear at the end. So I can choose to have 99 or just underscore other because the symbol comes after a number. So first all of the numbering folders are going to come up, then all the ones that start with the symbol, and then after the symbols start the letters. That's how the system is actually sorting things if you sort by name, right? That's how I organize and run my directory structure and my library. No, by no means do you have to do it that way. Of course not. Uh, I just wanted to show you an example of what I do and something that you can now take bits and pieces of and then kind of customize and mold it into your own specific needs. Now, I no longer need this guy, so I'm just going to delete it. And that's that so that I can have my clean directory structure back. Now you know the general introduction and setup of the library, what are bookshelves, what are the directories, how to organize and sort these things, how to filter and all of the good stuff. But it would be a good idea to kind of uh, uh, basically go over benefits and shortcomings of the two different key modes, which is basically the scan mode and the directory mode, which for me is the biggest difference. So uh, scan mode definitely has the benefit of um, keeping all of your documents in one physical space on the device, meaning, meaning in one directory on your device, and then you have an internal organization that way. So those are the benefits for sure. The shortcomings are that it can be confusing because it looks like it's folders, but it doesn't actually make real for folders. That's something that can be very, very confusing to some people. And for me personally, one other important shortcoming is that I don't have the ability to sort by type. So if I go into filter and sort, I cannot sort by file type when I'm in scan mode. This is not the case if you go into the directory mode. And as soon as you go into any directory that actually has some documents, you have this option here. And then we have the option to sort by name, sort by type, sort by size, sort by time. But we also have this, as I said, sort by type. And then, of course, here we don't have the documents. But in this one where I do have, I can sort by type. And then I have first EPUB and then all of the PDFs sorted out. So that's, I think, a very important uh, uh, differentiation between these two, between the scan mode and the directory mode. The second, I think, benefit of the um, directory mode is that it actually shows you the directories and the physical organization of your library. So you're building your library in the folders themselves, which is something that can easily be transferred then onto your PC, onto uh, yeah, another device or anything like that. If you do your organization of the library in scan mode, this is something that's transferable only, uh, well, to nothing really because we don't have that synchronization of the library between push books. I don't know of a way that I can save my library, export it and 
transfer it onto another device, let's say my Nova 2. If I wanted to have the same exact state of my library uh, on my Nova 2 uh, as I have it on my Note Air at the moment, it's completely impossible, or at least I don't know a way to do it in the library scan mode. However, in the directory mode, it absolutely transfers exactly the same. And all I need to do then is make sure that my autosync is looking at one or all of these directories if you choose to sync everything. And then, yeah, on my Nova 2, I can just hit synchronize and the state of my library is exactly copied. And it's on the Google Drive in the exact same organization, folder structure, location, and if I copy it, uh, yeah, if I copy any of the directories or all of them onto my PC or Mac, it's exactly the same uh, type of organization. So for me, the the directory mode or oh, definitely outweighs uh, the scan mode in in so many ways, mainly because it's something that's transferable and it makes a hell of a lot more sense. Um, yeah, at the current moment, if at some point they do actually start to <laughs> synchronize uh, with the cloud your state of the library itself with the bookshelves and all that, that kind of stuff, then it will make sense. However, at the moment, for me personally, this is how I use it and this is how I prefer it. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you've learned something new. If you did, please subscribe and like the video and ding the notification bell thingy to get notified when the new videos are coming out and when the new Big Books Guide chapters are coming out because they will be coming. There's lots more coming. Also, be sure to check back regularly on the Big Books uh, playlist so that you can, yeah, browse the content and find the answer that you might be looking for there. Thank you so much for watching, stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video. Bye!